Hello, everybody, and welcome to Red 2 Chatter, the podcast about everything Star Wars. In advance, I'd just like to apologize for my voice. Um, I'm a bit sick today, but that's okay. I'm going to power through. So, I'm your host, Dallin, and to, with me, I have my brothers and two other hosts, Jay. Hey, guys. And Ryan. Hello, everybody. And um, we got some pretty interesting topics today, so let's just jump right in. Alright, so news from around the galaxy. We got leaked photos from the set of Han Solo movie. I don't know how really how leaked right. photos. I like, guess you got to put the old air, air quotes, quotes around leaked. leaked. Uh, <laughs> I think this is just, they, they, put these, they put these out. I mean, how do you not see this person taking this picture from the right, angle? I'm pretty Come sure on. they put these out. <laughs> and look how grainy it is, so it's hard to tell what's actually there. I mean, you can see what's the, you can't see detail. No. But right. it's definitely kind of grainy and it's... Right, and even though they were released... To TMZ, which is like a huge, like, paparazzi, paparazzi yeah, <laughs> outfit. I don't think it was... I mean, I it, think they were purposely leaked. I think they were purposely leaked as well. They're not going to get... They don't give away any plot points. You can't really tell where they're at, what's going on. Mm-hmm. You can barely tell who the people are in this picture, except for Chewie. Chewie, because, <laughs> yeah, a Wookiee kind of stands out. Right. Other than that, you're going to see that they're standing on some sort of... Platform that's either ascending or descending. I Who guess. Knows? Yeah. Yeah. True. You don't really know. The, I mean, <laughs> uh, obviously, at one point it is up because the second photo right. has them all standing. But on do it. they mm-hmm. all get, all get on, on there and, and then, then it goes down? Goes down. I don't know. Right. <laughs> but you also can see like other film people in the background, so you know it's not taken from the camera Wasn't angle. It? My my question is, where's right? the guy with in the pink shorts? You know, with the boom <laughs> mic. Yeah, from, from <laughs> Hope. Yeah. 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 <laughs> where's that dude? Um, but yeah, like, it's it's a very interesting image because we were trying to figure out if it's from an Imperial base or if it's in a ship or if it's, like, on Bespin. I don't know. Like, we, we're trying to figure that out. I don't think he would go to Bespin. I mean, no, I don't Lando think doesn't have anything about Bespin. Bespin no, because La- Lando doesn't have Bespin yet, so I don't think you're going to see anything about Bespin. Or talk about it. Mm. But yeah, I wonder what that, like, like, what it's that big column there, but it has, like, looks like planets in it. It's hard, I don't know what that Yeah, it is. looks like a map, maybe? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Is that, is that a, is that a hologram? Is that real? Piece is of it art? Piece of art? Right. Trophies? Yeah. Well, yeah, for a minute it, there, I thought that was a back. Is this like tank. a high, is this like a high class bar? I mean, what is this? Yeah, is this a high class cantina? <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. maybe this is where Lando and Han play Sabacc for the, to win the Millennium Falcon? Falcon? Maybe it's a casino? Yeah, right. Maybe. I mean, they're trying also trying to figure out if that wall behind back there is supposed to be like sticking out, or is it? It doesn't look like it's. Kind of looks like this guy's tripping. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, the guy in the background. Those, yeah. are, those are all stagehands people back there. Yeah. So, they, like I said, I don't think you're seeing from the camera person angle. In costume is this guy in the foreground. It looks like he's got a staff. I mean, he looks like he's in costume. I think that's a boom mic guy. He's got like a mic yeah, on there. Look, that's yeah, it looks like. I that's, that's what, what I thought. I think he that's was. a grip, or whatever they call them, those guys. Maybe. Because he, does he have headphones in? Yeah, I can't. It looks like he might have. I guess it's hard to tell. It's so grainy. Yeah. That's why I'm telling you, this is just put out by the studio and they say right. it's leaked photos. And I, don't think I, I think it's just to encourage the fans that, look, we're still moving along with, we're probably going to use some of these shots and scenes that Laura or, Miller did, yeah. you know, that, you know, that not everything they did was, you know, bad. They had some, they did some great things and I think mm-hmm. they're just kind yeah. of showing that the the first photo definitely is it looks like it's Han Chewie and three others coming either up or going down on this lift I can't tell who the other three people are I have no clue right but it's definitely it looks like to me that's got to be Chewie oh well, it's definitely Chewie yeah. it's got to be Han <clears throat> yeah and that's got to be Alden yeah it's got to be right yeah next to him otherwise why would you and I do like the one person's comment that it kind of his, his jacket kind of looks like a uh, Battlestar Galactica warrior, <laughs> flight colonial jacket. warrior, like yeah, Apollo, or Apollo, a... yeah, or Starbuck, yeah, <laughs> jacket. <laughs> but is the what are his pants? Is that like they look like they like he has painted like, pants or I don't know what the heck that is. Looks like he's got boots and he just got like a lot of straps like on there for leather. Like oh, is that, is that what it is? It's so hard to see. It's leather it's so pants. It's so far away. <laughs> and his boots come up just below his knee it looks like. And see yeah, this the guy, pants. the guy with the guy with the with the boom mic I think is I mean he's standing behind the crane that's holding the camera I'm guessing. Right? I mean that's got to be a crane that's going out that's holding the camera. And I think the camera might be over 
to your left of this photo. Shooting yes. back this way. Because all these people on, on that very... Uh, all the way back there are all just stage hands. They're just wearing, like, street clothes. Right. And I'm sure they're not yeah. filming this moment right now. No. They're probably... Yeah, they're probably just talking about what they're going to do. Yeah. But the other photo where they're coming up, that's that's getting... I'm guessing that's being yeah. filmed. And, it, yeah, the angle we're seeing is not the angle we'll see it in the final. No, I, I'm movie. just guessing that it's coming from if the left. If we see it at all. Yeah, exactly. It could be on the cutting room floor for all I know. But uh, I'm just guessing they're shooting it from the left side and back towards that that column thing. Yeah. Because mm. you'd, you'd think that would be one thing you'd want to have in your shot. Well, yeah, you also... you That means you don't have any of these people in that shot that are behind them. I think those are all just stagehands. That's what yeah. they look like to me, at least. Right. I like yeah. the one person that's kind of leaning in and looking like a little creeper over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting photo, or a couple of photos. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm still so looking forward to this movie. I Me can't too. wait for this movie. Me too. I'm excited I can't to wait see. to just see some actual footage yeah. from this movie. I almost I almost don't kind of don't like these types of photos though because it kind of takes the magic out of how the the movie you know from the movie because like okay so they have like these weird lighting here to light them up correctly and all right, this stuff. And, I guarantee you, <laughs> if you do see this scene, you won't even think about these pictures. Yeah, probably not. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Not. I mean that's that's how I always look at it. Like you know I've seen. The pictures of like land speeders, and you can see the wheels, you know. Before True, the, and you don't think about I, that when you see yeah, the wheels. Think about freaking it. golf table. No, not the golf table. Oh, the ping pong pool, table. Ping pong table oh, that they with all the battleship pieces <laughs> put on it. Yeah, um, for the Death Star. The, for the Death Star. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for the to simulate the surface of the Death Star. Don't even think, think about, about it. it. No, that's true. You don't think so, about it, I guess. But yeah, so I, I mean, I like these photos though. I think they're very interesting. And again, who knows? These could not even be in the movie. <laughs> Alright, what's our next topic? Uh, Woody Harrison. Hell, Harrison? Harrelson. 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 Comments on the young Han Solo film director change. Um, basically, he just says, like, you know, they can relax. You know, that he thinks they're in really good hands. And, you know, of course, he, he's having a bit of fun. He's saying the Force is with us. And, I, right. you know, I, I really like Woody Harrelson as an actor. And, um... Yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what role he plays in in the Han Solo movie. Right, I know it's been like rumored that he's a like a mentor to Han. See, now they could go the really stereotypical route and just have it be like, oh yeah, he's the mentor to Han and he teaches him all this stuff. By the end of the movie, there's some plot twist that he's actually the bad guy and Han has to take him out or something. Or. Woody Harrelson tries to double cross Han, or vice versa, and so that puts a wedge in between. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Woody Harrelson is like almost always playing a a villain role or an antagonist yeah, he, yeah, he in always, some way. Always seems to be sort of a slimy jerk. Yeah. In some of his movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like like uh, Hey Mitch in yes, you know, yeah, in the Hunger Games, Games series, and also uh, he's, he, kind of, he's he's kind of a, a drunkard jerk. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Also, in the upcoming um, War for Planet of the Apes movie, from the trailers, it looks like he's going to be the antagonist. He's going to be right. kind of yeah. going against the apes. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what his character in the Han Solo movie, what it's, who he's going to be and what he's going to be all about. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad that he has confidence, though, in Ron Howard. Yeah, that's the other, um, that's the other thing he said. What was it? He said that we're in very capable hands. He's great. He's awesome. Such a gentleman. I'm so prepared. Right, just, he said he loved Chris and Phil, but uh, he thinks that they landed in very capable hands. So, yeah, I I, no, I agree with him. I think Ron Howard, we don't have any problems. No, I don't, I don't think there's any problems going forward with the movie. And like I said before in the other the previous topic, Lord Miller shot some great stuff. Uh, their sizzle reel that they sent out to the execs, that people really like that. They just didn't like sort of the direction they were going. They liked the, what they had shot, shot, but not all of the ad-libbing and that type of stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. You, and like I said before last week, it's hard to do that in the Star Wars universe, ad-libbing, because you start, you, get, you start running into canon issues if you start saying too much stuff off the cuff. Right, and I, I remember seeing a comment about, well, one of Star Wars' most infamous lines is an ad-lib, well, yes, but it didn't change the story. story. When Han Solo, or when Leia says, I love you, Han Solo says, I know, that was ad-libbed. It doesn't change the story. story. No, but if, if all of a sudden one of these characters like, 
oh yeah, but man, Bubba Fett was then. Well, he wasn't there at that time. You know, you can't do that. Right. And then that, then you got to go back and fix all that if you start, especially if you have a whole bunch of that kind of stuff happening in the movie. Right. It's the, you know, ad libs like I know, or ad libs like Har- Harrison Ford did in Indiana Jones, where he takes out the gun and shoots, shoots the guy. The guy. Yeah. Uh, because you know he has, he has the, the trots, trots. <laughs> and he has the trots during that scene. And he wants to get over with. Yeah. Uh, you just like those don't change the overall story. They they actually add to the character, mm-hmm. and I think that you know the I know scene is perfect for it. Han Solo would say, say that. that. Yeah, so, he wouldn't say I look. Right. He already told her that once before. He tell he already said that to her, and she didn't respond. Right? Isn't that? Am I well, not thinking? She says I love you, and then he says I know. Then later in Return of the Jedi, Jedi he says right. I love, love you. you. She, she says, says I, I know. know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I love these comments by Woody Harrelson. I think he's, you know, they're all positive. Mm-hmm. Of course, he's not going to come out and like <laughs> start spouting negative stuff. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he does still want to be in the movie. He wants the movie to do well. So yeah, and I think it, I think with with Ron Howard directing, I think it's going to be totally fine and. They'll get everything the way that it needs to be, and it's going to be a good movie. Yeah, right. I can't, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm looking. Was it to next it. summer? Yeah, they're still scheduled to hit the May 18th date. Okay, May 18th, 2018. Yep. All right. Almost. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Del. Ron Howard strikes twice on Twitter, giving us some more uh, pictures <laughs> from the Han Solo set. So this is from the editing room. Uh, you got. Star Wars coffee, may the froth be with you. And There's a, a backpack, coffee, yeah, that coffee mug, and then backpack, just a backpack and a pillow. <laughs> and a pillow. And it looks like you're spending some late nights and early mornings in the editing room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just love his sort of sense, sense of humor. humor. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's like, yeah, hey, here you go, some more photo photos from behind the scenes of the Star Wars console. Yep. Oh, but, no, nothing. And yeah. then you got the dressing room. I'm guessing, or uh, just a yeah, like a, rack, a, a rack with clothes of, on it. For, yeah, with costumes. costumes. Yep, costuming. It was, of course, we, we try to pick through and go, what kind of costumes we got here? But it's just jackets, really, or right, robes. Just like overcoats, overcoats or robes. Yeah. Just, I mean, <laughs> for all I know, that's the cat. That's the cast's coats that they hung up with when they came to the set or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> that could be somebody's daily wear. Yeah. Here, as far as, far as I know. <laughs> Oh, and there's oh, another one. Yeah, there's, there's another Can one. you guess that whose one? closet this is? Oh, it's somebody's closet, huh? Hmm. hmm. Now, is this like a, a, a the actor's closet okay. themselves? It's not Han or... Solo's. No. no. <laughs> it could be Lando's. Because he's the, very flamboyant. And... Is it the actor's clothing, clothing, or is it the character's? Character's clothing. Okay, it's the clothing. I'm guessing character's clothing. You're going to guess character. Yeah. yeah, so am I, because that right there is <laughs> pretty... That first one looks very... Very Star Wars. Like, I would almost see, like, Sabine Wren wearing something like that. Mm. Or, you know, one of the female characters. Yeah, yeah I can't tell if that's going to be a male or female. It's hard to tell. Because, I mean, like Down said, Lando could be, he is a little bit flamboyant. He, he wore a cape. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most yeah. people don't wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell by the way I walk. I'm a woman's man. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the kind of guy he is. So, I can... I could see that being maybe Lando's... Wardrobe outfit where he's got you know, right. wardrobe where he's got a whole bunch of different jackets for different occasions. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's hard to tell though. Yeah. So yeah, those are all the pictures. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like Ron Howard. He's he's a pretty funny guy. I like him. He's yeah, got a great I, sense of humor. <laughs> and I just think it relates to like how he's gonna keep things on the set as well. Just you know, light. Let's just you know. Let's have a fun let's time. Just try and, Make a good movie. Make Make a good movie. movie. Yeah, yeah. So, next one we got is Dave Filoni actually reveals deleted Rebels scene with Ahsoka meeting Bindu. So, basically, they have a little dialogue here. Uh, It was supposed to be back in season two. two. Um, So, this will be before 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 Bindu actually shows up. And before Ahsoka faces off with Darth Darth Vader. Vader. Yeah. So they have kind of a little bit of a dialogue, and uh, Bendu seems to be, like, warning Ahsoka about something, or, you know, kind of... Well, just wants to know her true feelings are, you know, are you sure you want to go through with the confrontation? 
you know, Ahsoka, I need to know the truth. Mm-hmm. So well, you guys aren't going to role, role play this and actually act it out? <laughs> <laughs> somebody want to be Ahsoka? Somebody want to be Bindu? Let's do that. Somebody, do, somebody, somebody choose Bindu, somebody choose Here, Ahsoka. You have, who has the deeper voice out of both of us? Well, you Jay do. does. Why? Jay's got the deeper voice. No, Ooh. I don't. You don't? <laughs> okay, so I'll you be are. Bindu, I guess, if you'll be Ahsoka. Okay. <laughs> Good luck with <All> right. Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got this, Jay. All right, you are set on this confrontation, then. I have to know the truth. So be it, but understand this. Much will change as a result of this encounter, including you. Isn't that true of all things? At, as, as times advances? As time advances? My dear, when I say change, I mean death. So I will die? Will you? I didn't know that. Goodbye then, Ahsoka Tano, former Jedi Knight. And that's that's the scene. That's, that's it. Scene. So... <laughs> I, I, you know, what does he mean? By well, that? first, why would Dave Filoni release this at yeah. this time? At, right when yeah. when there's so many questions about is Ahsoka alive or dead, and when you know we saw him at cel- celebration, he had the Ahsoka question mark, Ahsoka lives question mark, and then he had Ahsoka lives exclamation, exclamation point. point. So we assume that she's still alive in some form, but uh, I think. He just released this to give us more hope that she's still out there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Just I, another clue. Mm-hmm. Not like... Yeah, because she says, am I going to die? And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I'm going to die? And he's like, I didn't know that. You will? You will. I, I didn't, didn't know that. that. And, and so he's not he saying died. that she is going to die, even yeah. though he says death is the change. Right. And I think, you know, like Ryan said at our post, uh, post-recording post meeting... Uh, or, he's our pre-recording, pre, uh, no, yeah, yeah, not pre, post, pre, pre-recording meeting. Uh, he said that it could be the connection between Anakin and Ahsoka that died. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the death. That's the death he's talking right. about. That the <coughs> her ideals of what yeah, Anakin yeah. was is finally smashed and gone away. Right, Bindu is or very... the hope that she could change him back to the good side or something. You never know. He's yeah. very cryptic in his wording yeah, all he's the all, time. He mm-hmm. Talks like a philosopher. Yes. He's not, you, you, have you, the the me- you have to decide what the meaning is. <laughs> <Right>. Nostradamus. <laughs> he, yeah, he never gives you a straight answer. He, is, mm. he wants you to figure it out yourself. He's not going to tell you. Yeah. So, I mean, is it... For me, being an Ahsoka fan, is just... It's always fun to see more stuff about her and how, you know, her character development. Yeah. All right. So, cool. so that means she was, she, she was alive in Rebels. So, that means she has the possibility of showing up if they do a I don't know where they're gonna what the next cartoon's gonna be about though how, how long I don't know how long or what time period is gonna what, what, be what's her race again the Togruta Togruta I, I don't know how long they live either. they live like, about like 80 years okay so she could still t- technically be alive from mm-hmm. nowadays mm-hmm. right cause she was much younger than Anakin oh yeah she was only like well back then it's a long time ago in a galaxy far far away but <laughs> <laughs> true but, but... true this is, this is all in the past if you mm-hmm. remember that so right yeah, like, but yeah, she could still be alive I just during don't know if you, I just Force don't, Awakens time. Yeah, I just don't know if you can she bring her. She would be her, old. Yeah, yeah I just don't know old. if you can bring her into that unless you bring her in as just, as a, as a mentor type person. She'd be older than Luke. Luke, oh yeah, by quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Well, not by a lot, though, because <laughs> Ahsoka, I mean, how long was it before Padme got pregnant? Ahsoka She's was probably, almost still around. She hadn't quite left yet, so well, she, she was like, be, like about. She might be fifteen, sixteen years older yeah, than yeah. Like fourteen or fifteen years. That still makes her, you know, up there in age. Because she, he's in like right. in his sixties and yeah, like, so, so that's probably like seventies, seventies, eighties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering. She'd be an old Togruta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by Force yeah. Awakens. I'm just wondering if they were going to do something with you know a new cartoon that's somewhere in the middle there if they could bring her back. Not but, to mention that that theory that you were talking about where. She trained, like, she trained Luke in between whatever right. or in whatever. The New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, was that the time? Yeah. That they said? Yeah, that they, that <laughs> she actually trained her, him. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, you sure it's then, or would it be then, or would it be in between Empire and, Re- and Return? Because that's where you see the real development of Luke's abilities. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It could be between 
You know, and yeah, he doesn't af- have yeah, after Yoda. After Yoda, yeah, not before. Be Yoda, not before. After Yoda. Yoda, because Yoda says there is another. He doesn't. Does, that doesn't necessarily. Obi Wan assumes, assumes he's he, talking about a, another Skywalker. Right. Not and that may not be what he's actually talking about. You never know. Right. But uh, there's like that's like some crazy foreshadowing. Oh, that is. And a... thinking like way ahead in the future. Well, no, that's actually taking that line. Fine. Oh, and true. Yeah. Reworking it backwards, backwards to make it work. Like that's. <laughs> yeah, I guess you could do that. You could, yeah, to make it work. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise you from you'd a have, certain point of view, you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to have foreshadowing, and no one had that from, from a certain point of view. No, no, not in the seventies and early eighties. Yeah, nobody knew that there were, this was good for you know they didn't even know they're going to make. I guess they knew they're going to make more movies, but they knew they're going to make three, <laughs> right. yeah. one more after that movie. Yes, after Empire. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> but that's what I love about the Star Wars universe is they can take those lines in the original trilogy. And twist them into that something that were so like, like cri- vague, vague and cryptic, and, yeah, and make them into something something else if they need to, if, right? Yeah, if they want to, they can. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was the brilliance of like George Lucas and you know Lawrence Kasdan's writing is that they just had that. Uh, they left so many of those little like little nuggets in there that you could use, uh-huh. and you can make entire stories. I mean, the opening crawl for Star Wars ended up being an entire story, that an entire movie that played out in front of us. Yeah, with Rogue One, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. That's one of those reasons why I, you know, they kind of had a problem with those guys messing with Kazan's writing right. in the Han Solo movie because because he, there's a purpose for everything he writes. <laughs> yeah, whether you know it or not, in the future, the future. and make past you know yeah, things it, come from the past. Yeah. there's a there's a reason he's he in, puts all of these things in there. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Right. Okay, so Forces of Destiny has more shorts available on the Disney YouTube channel. Yeah, so we've seen... We talked about the first two last week, right? Mm-hmm. The, the two about Ray. Yep. No, was that the one was Ray. No, yeah, both no, of them were Ray. Yeah, both of them were Ray. So we haven't talked about Leia on Endor, mm-hmm. Leia on Hoth, uh, mm-hmm. Jen or so, and the two Ahsoka. Is there two Ahsoka? No, just, no, one, just one. one Ahsoka. One Ahsoka and one Sabine. Sabine. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about the indoor one. What do we think about that one? Okay. Let's... Okay. Uh, Leia and, and Wicked. Wicked. I, I like that one. It's kind of gives you... Now you know how she got her dress. Now, how the friggin' Ewoks knew that they needed to make a dress for somebody that tall, I don't know. Right. <laughs> I don't think they could have made it that fast. But they, you know, because he was... <laughs> but, uh, I still liked it. It's like, shows you, you know, that Wicket was, you know, was willing to lay down his life to protect his own. Right. And, and he was very brave. And Leia had no problem jumping in and helping him out, too, when she needed to. Right. To save his life. I just... Lo- That's just the bravery yeah. of Princess Leia. I just love, uh, how each of these shorts, um, they bridge a gap whether it be in the movies or in between the movies or one of the shows or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I just like how they bridge gaps. Yeah, they yeah. just sort of add like a little, like, little tidbits in between mm-hmm. things. That yeah, this, ba- yeah, yeah, this the one we're talking about is basically how Leia got, they got from after they killed off those two, she killed off those two... Uh, Stormtroopers. Uh, biker scouts. Um, oh, yeah. And then how did they get in to the, the original? Yeah, how did they get to the Ewok village? And then that's right. basically yeah. what it tells shows you is how she got there and how she got her dress. <coughs> maybe <Yeah. laughs> maybe saying bridging gaps is a bit too big. Maybe I like filling in cracks. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Filling in cracks. Yeah, filling in the cracks of the story that you didn't know how that happened. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, I always love the because these are geared for like six to eight year old kids. Yeah. I mean these shorts are good. I'm enjoying the hell out of them. So am I. <laughs> but I, and I just take them for what they are. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Fun, yeah. You know. Yes, an Ewok does not weigh as much as two stormtroopers. Storm troopers. We know that. But, <laughs> get, o- get over that part and just have fun with them. Yeah. You know? yeah get over the physics part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just have fun. Okay, the next one that aired was, I believe... The Ahsoka one. Ahsoka? Mm-hmm. That was the next one. Now, that one, I couldn't figure out where the gap was that they fixed. It was like during the Clone Wars movies. I think it was the probably, cartoon? you know... Um, when Padme has to go to that uh, the separatist place, 
and she has to go and talk to the Separatist lady to try and get peace with all. Oh, her. yeah. You know that episode? I think it's like right before that episode because that's when the costume change for Ahsoka came in. That's when you first see her in her new outfit. Is that episode? Okay. So maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. That's I would say. So there were two Ahsoka ones because there's the yeah, Ahsoka there's one with Padme team up. Team and then up. There's yeah. one with just Ahsoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that this one, is a Ahsoka Padme team. This one's just one where she's just doing a patrol through the city of Coruscant, and then robot run, runs across and there's people screaming and yelling, and then there's a robot that's friggin' like malfunctioning, malfunctioning yeah. and gone so haywire. She, so she takes care of it, and she's supposed to be getting to a ceremony with Yoda and Anakin, right? And she's already late. Where so she, those are the two Ahsoka, Ahsoka, and and I'm glad they have Padme in these. She's always one of my favorite ones, especially from the cartoon Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. She's really good. She's good. And oh, yeah. that, like, they really developed that character. And I love her in the first movie. Mm-hmm. I think she just gets less and less screen time in the next two, and I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in my opinion, the writing got worse. And worse. Well, yes. <laughs> the dialogue got worse, worse and worse, worse. in the, the other two yeah. movies. Especially for her character. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, then then there was what was that? So, you know, so we got that. We got the Ahsoka with the malfunctioning robot. Right. I really love that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As, you know, very just fun. It really doesn't fill in much of a crack. It's just kind of a, just a little bit more about her. Well, right. It just shows her to... sort of mindset that she knows she's already late for the ceremony. It's very important to her, but I still have to protect people. Also, right. My ever, job is to protect people. Do they ever explain what those little jewels are that the Tegruta wear? That she, like, wears on her... That's a Jedi thing. Is it? Yeah. yeah. For her race, because she doesn't have hair, mm-hmm. it's a Jedi thing, like... Like the ponytail, the little, the little, the little rat tail thing that they wear. The little wear. rat tail thing that... Yeah, that... Because they have gets, hair, yeah. so he gets, he gets to grow that out. She has that to signify her, I guess, rank in the Jedi mm-hmm. order. Yeah, how close she because is because she doesn't no, no longer be yeah, that one. Right, she gets this little beaded thing that she can hang. It's on probably her. what happens with the Twi'leks too, since they don't yes. have hair. Yep. Yeah. And Plo Plo Koon probably has his own little thing, thing that he had yeah. because yeah, when he was when he was a Padawan, but once right. you're no longer a Padawan, he's a master. You know, right. That's when you right. Like, but the other guys cut their hair. The, the humanoids cut their hair, and that's when the, she would take that thing off when she becomes a right. Jedi and that's knight. why like Qui Gon never wanted to be a. Like so, he kept his long hair because he never wanted to be on the, you know, on the council, the Jedi council. council. So he was a Jedi master. Yeah, but he was never on the council, so he didn't have to cut his, cut his <laughs> he hair. He cut his hair. Yeah, like, and those long <laughs> flowing locks. Um, but so the next one is Leia and Leia, Chewie. Leia and Chewie. Yon Hoth and R two D two and C three PO. This you, one you is my ears voice. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's my least favorite of all eight of them. Mm-hmm. And I just don't like the way they they depict Chewie. That's the only reason. Oh, like he's a big wuss. Yeah, like he's not he's not a wuss. He's not gonna sit under the wampa's arm like a teddy bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he would try to fight. Maybe he I did try to fight back. I thought maybe it was the wampa found a mate. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was more of a teddy bear, a teddy sleeping, bear sleeping thing. Sleeping thing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, could, I can see he's that. Eat him the, tomorrow. Eat tomorrow. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but just but the, it, like the fear that I saw in saw Chewie's face, it was just like didn't like. Compute, mesh with yeah. what I know of Chewie. But other than that, I had fun with the... Yeah, it's a kid story. I mean, right, it's, once again, I mean, it's a kid story. It's not right. like we haven't seen Chewie be kind of... Like, he a is little cowardly. Bit, yeah, he is a little it bit just, cowardly. You know, all you have to I do mean, is he was based the, off of the uh, Cowardly Lion. That's you have to go to the trash of. compactor. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, he doesn't want to go back in there right. and Han has to shoot well, him. He doesn't want to get in there in the first place. He doesn't want to get off the ledge where the door is, <laughs> yeah, because he's afraid of whatever's in the water. water yeah. So mm. like, he does have his cowardly when, moments. Yeah, and when he comes out, he's like, you know, and they're outside of the trash. Like, right. Come here, you coward! And then old Han, yeah, no way. And he shoots a right. So, I mean, shot so he does the have those later. moments That's of being a coward. Of, yeah, being a ca- bit of a coward. But, but he also has those moments of being, you know, I'm going to kill you. Right. <laughs> like when they're facing off with. Well, when he beats the crap out of Lando. He right. grabs him, starts choking him as soon yeah. as he lets him go. And when they face off with the probe droid on Hoth, you know, he gets its attention, basically. Yeah. So, so yeah, I guess he kind of goes through his moments. Right, he just has, <laughs> he has his things he's afraid of, maybe but he's I, just afraid of. The thing of I do like about that, yeah. that episode, though, is just Princess Leia, and he's like, okay, you guys fix the door, I'm going to distract this distract thing him. that's going to kill me. Right. He has no problem just distracting or running around being, right. you know. No, I mean... <laughs> 
It's just that little thing that I didn't like. And then the of rest course, of it was great. C-3PO has to be the person that screws up and wakes up the <laughs> by talking on the by talking communicator. On the communicator. <laughs> yep. <laughs> good old C-3PO. Yep. He's always good at getting you into trouble. Mm-hmm. Him and R2 right, so both. So the one after that, is it Jyn Erso? Yeah, I think so. So this one, because we don't really know a whole lot about Jyn Erso, really. No, not a lot. Um... It was more just a character build of who she kind of is. She, right. She looks. She acts like, in the, especially in the movie, she acts like I don't care about others. I just care about taking care of myself. But right. This showed she's not really that way. Right. And that's kind of a front. Yeah, it's sort of a facade that she has yeah. to put on to sort of like to survive. Right. Yeah. It's a survival, she's on the streets. Right. Basically. It's a survival instinct, I think, just that sort of demeanor that she portrays. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But in you know deep down, she really has a heart of gold. And that's sort of what yeah, this episode what, kind of shows. Yeah. With the, the <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why stormtroopers care to ban cats, but apparently cats are not allowed. <laughs> yeah, the little little kitties on Lothal. Oh, yeah. Which also allowed. tells me that she's been to Lothal, oh, which yeah. means she could cross paths with our friends in the show the rebels mm-hmm. yeah. as an animated character would you yeah, could, oh, could could be yeah it could happen that. so yeah so the stormtroopers try to take the little girl's cat and she goes on and beats him up and right. chases the cat down and get, yeah retrieves the cat, the cat for the girl and then beats up the stormtroopers some more and then takes cat back <laughs> yeah. to the girl <laughs> it, it's a it's a fun episode i it's, like that yeah and then the last one is it the last one well we did, did we talk about the padme and and ahsoka because that one was that wasn't the last one was was Princess Leia and Sabine was the very last one. Yeah, yeah. released. Right. Well, we talked sort of about Padme and Ahsoka because we talked about the so, change, yeah, and the costume change. But we didn't really talk about what happened in the episode with the no. infiltrator. Yeah. And you know, she was what a, a shape a <laughs> another shape shifter, shifter, just yeah. like Zam another Wessel. changeling, you know, yeah, changeling, changeling. changeling, like Zam Wessel was. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of cool. I could kind it's of one of my favorite races and stuff. I, I liked it, but guys. I could kind of see immediately, like, oh yeah, they're gonna be after this girl over here. Yeah, <laughs> setting the table. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely but I, sort of like the insight that Ahsoka has. Like, why do you have these utensils? The people you're meeting don't eat you with use utensils. utensils. Yeah, they use so their hands. Like, right. That was sort of like her. Yeah. Clue to like yeah. a, something's not right, <laughs> right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think this the last one was probably my favorite one. Yes, I like Sabine this one. and Leia was really good. Well, you guess the IG-88 as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how I figured you'd like it. IG-88 so, in it. Like. <laughs> but you got you got Princess Leia, who's working as a spy in the Empire, pretty much. I mean, yeah, she's, yeah. A, she's a senator, but she's also working as a spy. And they think that someone's come to assassinate her, and that's not really what it is. It's right. Sabine there to <coughs> get information from her. So she gives her the information, and then IG-88 I mean, shows up to actually right. go after Princess Leia. Right, to like there honest, was like two people you, hired. When you see Mandalorian armor, what's the first thing you think mm-hmm. of? You know, like you think of a bounty hunter bounty coming hunter. to kill, kill right. someone, kill somebody, uh, or capture them. One of the two. Mm-hmm. And I like the use of Sabine's like paint bombs. Yeah, because it really like hides her cover. Because they just see like a quick image that she's in a colored uniform. But when they see IJ eight down the hallway, he's sort of got that paint on him too. So they're like. <laughs> They just associate the stormtrooper like, oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. You know, Leia tips him off like, kill that bounty hunter. You know. Yeah. No, apparently, they don't kill him. No. Nope. He gets away somehow. Well, obviously, he gets away because <laughs> he's in Empire Strikes Empire Back. Empire Strikes Back. And that's all the shorts that they've let uh, release yep. so far. No. Well, I was gonna say what my question is. Uh, you know, we're gonna get a Maz Kanata one eventually. Right. Um. But, like, is there any other uh, female characters that you would like to see? Maybe, like, a Hera one? I would or, definitely like to see Hera. Or a Mon Mothma. I would mind seeing Mon Mothma. Yeah. Yep, Mon Mothma would be great. Uh, just to see her sort of, like, an, a different side to her, other than, like, the politician, um, you know, diplomat. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see, like, her in, like, some action. Oh. I'd love a Mon Mothma freaking doll, too. Like, oh, I would buy I would also, that. I also <laughs> would mind yeah. seeing a... Wow, well, what's the lady from the comic books? The professor? Yes, yeah, oh, Dr. Uh, Afra. Dr. Afra. Dr. Afra. Dr. Afra one would be cool. So, yeah, there's definitely some other ones that are out with, there that I wouldn't mind triple seeing. Triple Zero and BT1. That'd <laughs> be pretty good. I wouldn't even mind seeing something maybe with the older Leia from Force Awakens or before Force Awakens or right around Force Awakens. 
I wouldn't mind seeing them go back to the prequel eras and do like Shock T. Yeah. And uh, uh freaking and um, uh Aura Singh. No, yeah. no, sorry, not Aura Singh. Um, freaking uh, what's her name? Ayla, Ayla Sakura. Ayla yeah. Sakura, and then Dula. I mean, if you want to do Aura Singh, what is what is, cool. Andula, <laughs> what is Andula's name? Andula. Because she's also the she's the blue Twilight. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I can't think of her last yeah. name. And what's the what's the one girl you like that's a, a Padawan too, like Ahsoka? Oh, oh, uh, freaking um, Barris. Barris. Yeah. yeah, there's Barry other Sophie. Yeah, 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 there's other people you could do. You could or even Luminara. Do... Yeah, Lunara and Dula. Yeah, and Luminara, Luminara and Dula. There you yeah. go. And Dula was her last name. Um, or even the the lady from Mandalore. The oh, Satine. Satine. Yep, Satine Get from Mandalore. In there. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch you could do. Yeah, especially if you go back into the Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a lot mm-hmm. more. Yeah. Yep, that'd be cool. It would be pretty cool. I mean, they're doing well. I think I haven't like looked recently as to uh, how many views time, they have, but it, they're well, getting almost a lot. A, one of them, the very first one I had last time I saw was like six hundred thousand views. Yeah, so close to a million. Probably now, by now, it might be close to a million views. They're showing pretty well. So, and I just saw today that the next episodes are going to be released in October. So, mm-hmm. another, forward, is it going to be another eight? Look forward to them. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we'll just look forward to them. Then. Yeah. For this just being on just YouTube, and I haven't seen any like real advertising or push for it, so no. it's just word of mouth pretty much. I mean, I mean, there's a little bit of anybody that follows it's this kind of stuff. Basically, knows. like the Star Wars community is like. This. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, the like I was talking to a, some a Star Wars fan guy at work, and he had no clue, and I was like. Yeah, check him out. So he was watching him on his phone <laughs> during yeah. our lunch <laughs> during, during our lunch the, break. Yes. What's the young younger kid? No, he... the other one of the other guys. Okay, he's got a couple teenagers that are big Star Wars fans too. So yeah, because like I said, they're like for they're geared for six to eight year olds, yeah, boys he's... and girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm in a my forties and I love them. So <laughs> <laughs> I really like them. Too. I can't wait for the next ones to come out. So it's really gonna be. They're really fun, and I'm looking forward to the toys too. So let's get the <laughs> toys out. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. get the toys out so I can buy them up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can spend so, more money. I so, don't have. <laughs> so I can so I can buy toys so some other little girl can't get them. <laughs> yeah, and push girls out of the way. <laughs> yeah, speaking shove them, shove them kids out of the way. <laughs> freaking start grabbing up for myself. Speaking of toys, let's zoom on over to Tashi. That's a good uh, segue, right? <laughs> and uh, so we got just one thing, and it's the sideshow. Uh, collectibles announces a premium format Captain Phasma and Stormtrooper. We've seen them, so we don't really need and to And K2SO. Yeah, and K2SO. Which didn't make the show notes, but I just saw today on my Facebook feed that K2SO is also a premium they, format. This is figure. all stuff that they released at San Diego Comic Con, right? Isn't that where they were doing? Yeah. Or I mean, that they're, or it's around. They're doing it around right. San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. Uh, I, I like and I dislike the premium format figures. Mm-hmm. I love the detail in them, and they're yeah. so gorgeous. But I don't like, you can't pose them how you want. They're just, you know. Yeah, they're solid statues. Yeah, they're statues. They're where static I would like, instead yeah. of. And I, I, I like the, the the people they chose. I mean, Captain Phasma and Storm just Trooper. the normal old Stormtrooper is always a great, and K2 yeah, great, SO. great outfit. And K2SO is probably one of my favorite characters from a Rogue One. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, I agree with Jay. I like. I, I would rather see more quarter scale figures if you're going to do a bigger one. Because right. right now, right now they don't have any. I, I just looked like the other day to see if there's any quarter scale yeah. figures. I mean, I love my quarter scale Boba Fett. That thing is my like pride and joy <laughs> in my of my collection. So yeah, the thing is just so cool. I love the way I can pose it any way I want. You know, I get get tired of the way it looks and change it change around. it up. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, and I, and those ones really have a lot of even more detail than like the six scale figures, the quarter scale. Do yeah. I mean that's quarter size. I mean that's a pretty good size. Yeah, there's it's huge. Like, <laughs> it yeah. takes up an entire case almost by itself. So I like to see more quarter scale uh, Star Wars from the side so collectible. Guys. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Or of course, I'd just be spending more money, but that's all yeah, right. me too. I, that's all I'd be doing is. <laughs> I'd love to see all the bounty hunters, but you know, then I'd really be spending a lot of money, right? Because I have <laughs> to have, have all of them. them. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I have to have all the six scale ones. Uh, yeah, I, I yeah. already got them all on pre I only have, and I have one so far. One sideshow collectible, and it's something that I got for a graduation present 
It's my two jawas <laughs> that I got from Ryan. <laughs> yep, yeah. Ryan got them for me for my high school graduation. Yeah, I need to get you a case so we can... Yeah, I'm still looking. Yeah, I'm I need, still, like... Still doing that research and trying to find the one I, like, I got Jordan. It's hard to find. Yeah, it's amazing. You'd think there'd be more kind of those kind of cases out there that could hold those, that kind of stuff. Right. Like a six scale figure but man it's hard because yeah, our, yeah. our sister jordan has a six scale bard bard from the hobbit, hobbit. so I, we got her a case, case for it yeah it has like the four positioning lights above and below so you can really so make, it's, yeah it's really, it's nice. really nice you can illuminate it up real nice yeah so i'm on the search for one of those for down just i'm trying to find the same price range i found them in which was like the 80 to 90 dollar price range and that's pretty good for a case like that right now, the ones I'm finding. And they're all, like, overseas, and I don't want to wait for shipping on that, so I'm trying to find the, somebody in the U.S. that Yeah, it would yeah. be nice if a local company could make something I, like that. I would love it because I have my, um, not only do I have the Jawas, but I also have my uh, Captain Marvel figure that's yeah. up there as well, and that uh, Silvaria from the um, one video game, yeah. uh, Tales of Valkyria. I have her, too. And I would love to put all three of them into, or all four of them, into a uh, into cases cases of their own. Yeah, it's definitely the best way to display them and keep them nice and nice. Yeah, keep the dust off them. Yeah, that's, that's the enemy of those kind of figures. Is keep the them dust. out of the sunlight. Yeah, mm-hmm. sunlight. <laughs> and you don't want to keep them under. Uh, uh, what's that lighting? The fluorescent. Yeah, fluorescent. Fluorescent lighting. lighting no. No. Yeah. Incandescent lighting's okay, but not the fluorescent. Mm. All right. Yellow stuff. Yep. Just like the sun. It changes yeah. the color. All you have to do is go to your local grocery store and go find some cheddar cheese that's been sitting in there for a while. That does not in a protective cover. I work at a grocery store, so I know. <laughs> that's, it doesn't have the protective plastic, the UV plastic around the cheese. Mm-hmm. You'll know right away which one's which because it starts to turn pink. Oh. The cheddar cheese does. And that's just from the that's where fluorescent the pink, lights. That's where the pink and cheese comes from. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I never knew that. The more you know. <laughs> so. And knowing is half the battle. Hey, G.I. Joe. This is about G.I. Joe. Okay. <laughs> G.I. Joe. <laughs> hey, this show's not about G.I. Joe. <laughs> I love that franchise, dude. Not the movie franchise. Not the, the movie cartoon. franchise. The can- yes, the cartoon franchise. Whoever made those movies doesn't need to make movies anymore. <laughs> no, please don't make any more G.I. Joe movies. Speaking of movies, uh, <laughs> we had go check our, our other podcast, Beals to Reels. Uh, I do it with my sister, and um, yeah, we do just all pop culture stuff. If you guys want to go check that out, link is in the description. All right, so, gaming with Gamorians. So, Battlefront 2 open beta test to start out on October 6th. Now, the, the one problem... <laughs> that I have with this is that word right there. Pre-orders. Why? Uh, Two-day early access for pre-orders? No. 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 EA, you're messing up again. Stop it. Stop it. Because that would would just make it where, you know, people are going to pre-order your game more. And usually, pre-ordering is a very, very, very dangerous, dangerous tactic to use because... When a game comes out, sometimes it's, especially an online game like this, sometimes it's not fully finished. Like, there's still a whole bunch of bugs to just work out and stuff. That's what the beta test is for. Yeah, yeah. But even even with a beta test, it's not that great. And, you know, two-day early access for pre-orders, I'll just give, you know, whoever got a pre-order, you know, good head start and stuff. And, I mean, I guess it's not that bad. It's not as bad as some other companies have done it, but still. Yeah, it's only two days. It's not like two weeks or something. At least it's not two weeks. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, just be careful with pre-orders, people. Be careful with them, because you can seriously get uh, screwed over with pre-orders. But, other than that, you know, open beta. I'm excited for it. Um, I'm not going to be able to play it, but... I'm excited yeah, it's just to see. for the computer, right? Yeah, it's not yeah. for the console. Yeah, it's just it's just for PC gamers, um, PC master race gamers, and uh, yeah. So I'm I'm still excited for it though, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, for me, all this tells me is that 
We're getting closer. Yeah, yeah. To being, being finished. And then we're and that's one step closer to the visceral Star Wars game. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is what I think. And I'm like, okay, I'm I'm excited for it. I'm excited. Um so yeah, that's that's it. That's it for gaming with the Gamorians, unless you guys want to talk about any unless you want to bring up your, your staple thing about the Elder Scrolls game. Oh, oh. game. Oh, yeah, I can bring that up. Well, I was, make, I was thinking... Can we make one? Can we make a Star Wars Elder Scrolls? No, I was, think, I was thinking about that. <laughs> open world? I was open thinking world? about that today, and I was like... So, right now I'm going through Skyrim for like the 16th billionth time, uh, going on kind of like a challenge run where all I do is just use daggers, right? And that's all I use in the whole game. I don't use any other weapons. So I was thinking... Can you do that in like kind of a Star Wars type game where you only use force powers? You don't use any other. You only use force choke and force push. And yeah, and, and and maybe hand to hand combat. Yeah, no like, lightsaber. Like, yeah, no lightsaber, no guns, whatever. That'd be pretty fun. That'd be pretty interesting. It's definitely to do. make it more challenging for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we have extra chatter. So if you guys want to, we can review New Hope. Yeah, let's do a New Hope this week. Or or just Star Wars, as, as it, it was, was originally, originally called. called. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In 1977, it was yeah. called Star Wars. It wasn't called Star Wars A New Hope. It wasn't called Episode 4. four. four. It was Star just Wars. called Star Wars. <laughs> and when, did, um, did Empire Strikes Back, when it came out, was it Episode 5? Yeah. yeah. When it and came then that's out, when everyone was like, what? By the time they... No, because by then... They, they had renamed They had Star renamed Wars Star Wars to A, a New, New Hope. hope. Episode, yeah, episode 4. four. But, like, still, were people a bit confused? Like, why is it episode four? Yes, why is it episode yes. Now, five? now, back then, yes, when you first with it, why is it, wait a minute, episode four, where it was one, two, and three. Right. They did, you know, and then it was just, the, uh, in my opinion, that kind of helped the movie, though, because that made it more of a. It was like more a, intriguing. It was like, oh, what's, what happened before all this? Mm-hmm. Right. And that's where you get all the questions and all right. that. It you created know. a lot of intrigue and you know, a lot of, like, and just fandom people freaking talking about speculation. it. Speculation, right. So, what do you guys think of as of the movie as a whole? Okay, episode four, A New Hope, is my favorite Star Wars movie of all time. This, yes, I, mean, I like it better than Empire Strikes Back. And I think I like it better because it just sets... I just like the way it sets up Luke, Leia, Han. Han, you get to learn all the characters, and you really get to learn about them in this movie, like... Where they came from, almost, you know, and not where they're going, because you don't really know. All of them, I mean, especially Luke and Le- Luke, especially Luke. I mean, Luke, you yes. definitely learn a lot about. Han's still a little bit more of a mystery of the, of the past, right. what his past is. Yeah, and they, his past is always going to be a mystery until we until see this movie. We, yeah, until we see the new movie that's right. coming out next year. I mean, he always, like, refers to his past a lot. I mean, when he's talking to Lando, he refers to his past. I mean, he, he lives a lot in the past, it seems like. Honda's, but getting back to the movie, I just like. Well, it's the first movie, so it's just so magical to watch it. Like when I was a kid, I, anytime I'd stay home sick from school, man, that VCR player was. I was playing it in the VCR over and over and over. Did you eventually end up destroying your? And VCR? I would just. I mean, <laughs> the, I think my mom could attest to this. I could recite the entire movie from beginning to end, and like. <laughs> You know, when I was a kid. And every time I watch it, there's always, like, little things you pick up. Even today. Yeah. It's amazing. Just a little while ago, I was watching it, and I realized that somebody had referred to R2-D2 and C-3PO as robots, not droids. And I'm like, what? How did I not hear that before? You know? Yeah. Just things like that. It's Luke that says it. Luke says it as they're burning the Jawas. As he's about ready to, as he's about ready to go back to, back (laughs) home. Once he makes the real, the connection. It's like, if they knew who they sold the robots to, then that would lead them back home. home. You don't even realize, he said robots. He didn't say droids. He didn't say droids. That's the only time they refer to as robots. Yeah. It's, and I didn't even realize that until... I watched it probably maybe six months ago, eight, I don't know, when I told you about yeah, it. Yeah, and then I went and watched it and right. I saw it and I was like, there it is. It's like, so it's, <laughs> it's just a magical movie. I love, like, from the very opening scene, <coughs> it just dry, like, just captures your, like, it just draws you in and holds you right there. Like, I'm on the edge of my seat. You know, you've got the ship flying and then you got, and, you know, they get captured and it, 
Yep, and then that door Darth Vader <laughs> opens, and, and all of a sudden that little that board, all the stormtroopers Darth, come right. through, and boom, 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 and then Darth, and then right, and then Darth Vader through. comes through. Oh, it's just an incredible movie from yeah. beginning to end. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a, yeah, it's it's my second favorite behind Empire Strikes Back: A New Hope, but still, I agree with you. It's like one of my favorites, though. It's it's just great from beginning to end. There's and there's just you learn so much about definitely about Luke. I mean, where he came from and what he is, and you know, and then you get Obi Wan, the kind of the old wizard guy, and he's a little bit mysterious, and you don't know much. You don't ever learn much about him, but right, you know, before he he dies, but then he sacrifices himself for Luke. You know? Yeah, and he does it in such a way that he knows what he's doing. Like he looks over yeah. at Luke. Yeah. And that's when he decides, he decides to... I'm just going to go ahead and let Darth Vader finish me off. Right. I'm done. And in Luke's presence. Yeah. So to just fuel sort of Luke's... Like, not anger. Want, not anger, but wanting want to, to learn, learn to be a Jedi. Yeah. Yep. And then, yeah, and then there you got the smuggler and the, you know, little dis- disreputable guy. And you got the princess you got who, the who's in trouble, but when she, once they... <clears throat> she's in trouble, you know... And I always like the cliche, oh, the woman's always in trouble. Stuff. But she's in she's in trouble because she gets captured. But once she's out of that prison, she takes over. She, she takes charge immediately. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. It's like, into the garbage chute, fly boy. Right. <laughs> she's going to get a rescue. You ain't planning for getting us out of here? Yeah. She starts She starts just railing on these guys. Right. And she just takes charge stupid. immediately. She takes charge immediately and goes to the right, garbage chute. Yeah, this farm boy and this smuggler guy. And this yeah, walking I mean, carpet. Yeah. yeah. Any or, clue what they're doing. Yeah. They're just flying by the seat of their pants. They have I no know. plan. Yeah, and then it's basically, I can get us out of here. You know, right. and then all of them kind of have their own, well, her and Han definitely have friction of who can get them out. Yes. And, but, and Luke's kind of just, oh my God, let's just get out of here. <laughs> so, you know, it's. Yeah, it's Han doesn't story. take orders from nobody. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he tells yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. I'll take I mean, perhaps you'd sweetheart. like it back in your cell. Your you know, highness, I, right? <laughs> so they have that great friction between the two of them. That's how you. I mean, you didn't know then because you nope. know you didn't know then that they would get together. But they, that a lot of times when that's oh, the, yeah. the friction is what draws draws, them draws like you know attraction. Yeah, right, you know, like a little bit of attraction in the beginning. You know, you didn't know Leia and Luke were brother and sister. No, no. so you just automatically assume that those two are going to get together because you well, know yeah, the you, main character. He always gets with the girl, yep. like you know, and he saves the princess, and the princess falls in love with him. Right. It, you know, and when you Luke never first guessed. sees Leia, he's like enamored with her. He's like she is beautiful, oh, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's oh yeah, like, Carrie Fisher, like, wow. especially Carrie Fisher back then. Right, she was, <laughs> and you know, he, she was he, beautiful. He's only seen her in the hologram, you know. Yeah. And we barely really can tell what she looks like. But and that's, that's what, just such a great that, movie. That's yeah. one thing I noticed when I went back and watched it. I was like, man, Carrie Fisher was a beautiful. Oh, she's not. Gorgeous. She's not hot. No. She no, is, she's gorgeous. She is beautiful. Yes, <laughs> a and beautiful mm-hmm. woman. Incredibly attractive. And I was like, and uh, I was like Jay. You know, that's one of those ones when I was sick too, and a little kid, free sticking Star Wars, watch it over and over and over. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we wore out the first couple tapes. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys must have. Over and, oh yeah, you guys must have. Back worn in the out old days of the VHS tape, because <laughs> yeah, you know, if you rewind tape too many times, times it's yeah. gonna corrupt it and. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure that it started getting glitchy there at the oh, end. I'm sure. And then had to yeah, go buy qual- a new one. Yeah, the quality was going away by then. But what's funny I is I think care. I still have my VHS tapes somewhere of the, <laughs> like the second the second grouping of them. Yeah, that we the, bought. the second release. And then the yeah, so yeah, I was the same way when I was sick or during summertime. Man, I'd watch that thing. Watch it. Watch it. Watch yeah. it. God, just get the... almost all the lines in. I mean, I was watching it just like maybe was it like, what were we watching it like three days, three three months ago? Not even that, maybe three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was freaking rattling off lines. I'm like, I still got it. I still got I it. Still I still remember those, all these right? lines. That was you with Empire Strikes. That was yeah. Back. I guess that was me and Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. I watched that one a couple days ago. And I'm like, bam, bam. I'm just firing off lines before they see them. It's funny. It's okay. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It does that. <laughs> so what are your thoughts? Well, okay, well, I mean, uh, I didn't grow up with this one um, like these two guys did. Of course, I was, you know, introduced to it young, um, but I didn't, like, watch it religiously like these two did when I was little. Um, I watched, you know, Phantom Menace, <laughs> and uh, I never watched Attack of the Clones that much, but I watched Phantom Menace and Revenge of the Sith when I was younger. Um, but I always liked 
new hope. Like that, you know, like whenever I just wanted to relax, I just put, pop in that movie when I was little, watch it. I would love it. And, you know, I, of course, I, when I was like maybe eight, I decided, you know what, I'm going to watch all, all six of them in a row. And I did that in one day because I was sick at home. Because you know, the great and, movies when you're not feeling good, man. Yeah, they just <laughs> lift your spirits up. Like you just don't care about being sick. You just <laughs> sit there and watch them. But I, yeah, I, yeah you get immersed in the yeah. story. You know, now that I'm older and I watch it, I love how it sets up this universe. I love how you know you go into the cantina, boom, 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 boom. Every single shot is different. Every single uh, character. And every single alien race looks so unique and different and creative in their own way. And even, you know, even the special, you know, revised editions, they still look good. You know, there's not like, except for, you know, CGI job of the HUD, but that's, that's a story <laughs> for a different time. Yeah, we don't uh, talk about that scene. <laughs> we don't talk about that scene. That wasn't in the original Even movie. though that scene has Boba Fett in it, we don't talk about that scene. <laughs> that scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, like you, you know, you have Greedo. He comes in and he's talking about something with Jabba the Hutt towards Han. And you're like, wait, what is this all about? You know? Yeah. You, yeah. you don't have no idea what that means. You just know, that he, owe, he, owes him, he owes Jabba money. That's mm-hmm. all you know. And then right. Han just shoots him and blasts him. Yeah, Han did shoot first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course Han and, shoots first. Well, Greedo didn't even shoot at all. <laughs> no. He was just pointing the gun yeah, at him. You didn't see that terrible CGI <laughs> head bob to the side as he dodges <laughs> the, the bullet. Yeah. It's one of the worst CGI jobs on Harrison Ford's head ever. Just like it completely dislocates his head from his neck, and then he comes back. It's so bad. Yeah, we don't talk about that scene. We don't talk about that scene. We don't. <laughs> Han, we don't talk, we talk about the scene. We just don't talk about the shot at the end when they redid it. Cause it's right. Stupid. Yeah. Yeah. The, and that whole scene right there with Greedo is one of the reasons I love this movie too, because it's the first time you hear an alien talk. Mm-hmm. I just love the sound of the Greedo. sound like the Rodian. Yeah, language. That, yeah. language. Yeah, language. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so it's cool. so foreign and right. different and alien, you yes. know. And like, it's something that you would never hear from a different from like another. Especially well, thing. especially back back then in like the seventies, eighties, you just didn't see that. It wasn't no. something that anybody. Now you see it in movies all the time, but you didn't see aliens talking. In a totally different language. I mean, you might have had, you had stuff, you had Star Trek. So Star Trek was there with the with Klingon before right before uh, this, Star Wars right. before Star Wars. But you didn't see it that much. It was just in movies. It just didn't exist. Yeah, it was like something totally foreign. Yeah, it is like I loved Greedo. He was one of my favorite little action figures when I was a kid. I mean, yep. his race, the Rodians, just they were just look cool. Mm-hmm. They're really, they're really cool. I love the Rodians. And that's one of the guys. And yeah, there's just cool. there's just so many good scenes in that whole movie. I mean, the whole cantina, all of Mos Eisley. I mean, I love I love Obi Wan's description of Mos Eisley. You know, you'll never find a, a hive of a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. villainy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> than Mos Eisley <laughs> spaceport. And then you go into the cantina, and there's all the there's all the villainy and the the wretched hive of villainy and scum right there, yeah. sitting around drinking blue milk. <laughs> yeah, it's just such an incredible movie, and yeah, like you get to see the haunt, like Luke's place where he lives. That is one of the coolest sets ever. Yeah, like in you know all oh, the underground. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to have that. I mean, if I could like, build that, if I was ever like one of the mega million lotto, I'd be a Type of house I wouldn't mind. Yeah, build. the Lars I homestead. I wouldn't build so it in the sweet. desert, but <laughs> no. But the Lars homestead that is just so cool. Like everything about that. I mean, movie. you could you could build like a house that's similar to Jen Urso's, you know, back when Galen's house. No, oh, Galen's yeah, house. Yeah, you can you can build something like that. It's in a big, huge green field. Yeah, I mean, just everything about this movie just is my childhood. Like. Oh yeah, the toys I played with. Everything, oh, like to where my imagination comes from, you know, it's all I can take everything back to almost this, this movie, movie specifically. Yeah, the anything that you ever came up with with like just yeah, you're like just ima- you know how you used your imagination with the toys, and then right. even like like especially for you like with art, 
with drawing um, and stuff like that. Even when I you do, do like you draw from Star Wars, it's amazing. And I, you know, I've been working on a fan fiction novel. Same here. And it's always in this time yep, period. Yeah, yeah. So a, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it cro- like my it crosses paths. Like I have my main character. He just leaves Alderaan as it's getting blown up. So, I mean, there's. <laughs> This movie, like, means so much to me. Mm-hmm. Same here, because my fan fiction, uh, sh- my character, she walks into the most Eisley uh, cantina yeah. right after they leave. So they're still sweeping up the arm on the off the floor, and they and you see and she sees Greedo like <laughs> face down on the table. She's like, "What the heck went on in here?" Like, you know, and she just walks in and she finds her own crew, and then they take off, and because she's getting hunted by the Imperials. And that's that's it, right? I mean, and and then they never really cross paths with the Imperials again. Every once in a while, they do. Yeah, my character doesn't either. My character goes on; he has his own adventure, mm-hmm. he has his own problems. Yep, He's here. more avoiding getting captured by bounty hunters than he is. Yeah, Imperial yeah. entanglements. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. So yeah, it's it's just amazing it's, how that movie is just yeah, it's just and I, it, I loved when we do. Empire Strikes Back, you'll hear how much I love that movie, too. But this one, for me, is, like, the reason Empire Strikes Back exists. So I have to love this one more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And it might be that you're a little <laughs> bit older, so therefore you remember this movie, like, when it came out or right after it came out. I mean, you were... Right. I was just born yeah. a year before. So when we went... When they when I went to this movie, it was probably the re-release of it right before For Empire. Empire Strikes Back. Right. So therefore, Empire Strikes Back had a little bit more of an impact on me than A New Hope did. By right. the way, if you guys are wondering what my favorite uh, movie in the entire Star Wars, you know, like, uh, legend, I guess it would be now. Um, legacy? Yeah, Legacy. Uh, it would be Return of the Jedi. I love Return of the Jedi. It's one of my, it's my favorite out of the originals. And my favorite out of Overall, all seven of them, all yeah, seven of them, yeah, so far. When we're Empire's mine, and Jay's got a new hope, so <laughs> it's the original three. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that was probably the one that I grew up on the most. I mean, you get we'll to get learn about that. the Force for the first time, and mm-hmm. to me it's just like this, like, sort of, co- like, anybody can learn it, the way Obi-Wan describes it, you know? Yeah. You just have to believe in it. So it's almost like a religious type thing comes in there, so... You know, Han didn't believe. He had no reason to, to you know. And he'd never seen anything that right. would bind the Force together, or bind the universe together. Right, and, you know, he's been from one end of the galaxy to the yeah. other. He's never seen any all-powerful Force First. that controls his destiny. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, it's... Oh, is this, I could talk about that's, hours for this movie, yeah, but... Yeah, me too. That's, that's what's... Let's go with our ratings. Okay. Before we just keep talking, because yeah. I can go on and on. Uh, this is, <laughs> yeah. this, this is a five scum and villainy out of five. You can't do any better. You can't do really any better than a new hope. No, this this, is this a, gets five blue milks out of five for me. <laughs> this is a f- five. I don't. Uh, he doesn't like you. I don't like you either. <laughs> out of five, like, <laughs> this is a great movie. It's just yeah. if this is like. If you want to find my definition of an almost perfect movie, it'd be this one. It's it's does it have its I, issues? Even yeah, th- yeah, it does. Yeah, but every movie does. Yeah, does it have plot holes? Yes. Yes. Does it have, you know, scenes Te- that are like mm-hmm. what? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But just from beginning to end, the story they tell, it could have just been its own movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you they never needed have, to go anywhere else. else. No. It when, could have been just they blew up the Death Star and it's over. The Empire's over. It's over. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. I mean, you see Darth Vader scream off in his little ship, and that's all you see. That's all you know of what's left what of the Empire. Of, of the Empire, Empire really. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's a great movie. <laughs> it is a great movie. So, with that uh, nice, warm, uh, <laughs> fuzzy ending, right? <laughs> we're wrapping it up for this uh, podcast episode. Uh, episode 12. 12, yes. 12. Oh, nice. we're, we're doubling up. Um, so I hope that you all enjoyed. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Jay, where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at jwilsonbydesign. You can also find me on Twitter at jbird51. That's J-B-I-R-D-5-1. Mm. Uh, once again, I don't do social media. Mm-hmm. 
So move on. Okay. And I <laughs> move along. Move, move along, along. Move along. Move along. The quotes are endless. <laughs> they are endless. I use them all the time. <laughs> um, you can find me on my YouTube channel. Um, that is in the description below. I'm not gonna bother spelling it out. And uh, I also have a Facebook page by the same name. I will try to post more often to it. Uh, once my fan fiction starts getting into development and I actually start writing parts to it, uh, right now it's in the planning section, but once that starts going out, I'll start kind of um, showing you my Wattpad uh, account um, once that starts up. But until then, we will see you all next time. So, uh, yeah. Bye. Bye. See ya.